Hi and welcome. Um, today we're going to talk about percentages. Now usually when I'm teaching in class and I write that symbol on the board, it is accompanied by a series of groans and quite occasionally some really worried faces. What I want to try to do today is take that worry away. We're going to look at a couple of straightforward ways of finding percentages of amounts and I hope we make it clear for you. Let's start by having a look at the word itself, percent. Well, it breaks down into two parts. Cent, which basically means hundred. If you think of a century, a hundred years, or a hundred cents in a dollar. So cent means hundred. And per, well, that is kind of part of. So if we are looking at the word percentage, it really means parts of a hundred. So, for instance, you might see something like 60, and the way we write percent is a symbol that looks like that. So that is 60%. What it actually means is 60 parts out of 100. Now, that's quite useful because there's another way we can write that, and that is to write 60 parts out of 100 because the truth is that the percentage is exactly like a fraction, except it always has 100 on the bottom. Having recognised that, that a percentage is actually a fraction, this means that whenever I'm presented with a percentage question, I'm going to treat it as a fraction. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do here. If you are not familiar with finding fractions of amounts, it might be something you want to have a look at first before you move on. Um, and I do have a video on my channel if you'd like to have a look at it. But let us move on. Uh, we looked at 60%. So let's just assume we are being asked to find 60% of an amount, shall we say 80. Now, if I've got a calculator to hand, and we'll look at the situation if you don't have a calculator a little bit later on. But if I do, all I'm going to do is say, OK, I know that 60% means 60 out of 100. So the question I'm being asked is 60 hundredths of 80. Therefore, I am going to follow the rule that I would use for finding any fraction. I'm going to take the 80. I am going to divide it by 100, and then when I take the answer, I am going to multiply it by 60. Now, if you are familiar again with dividing by 100 without a calculator, you can simply do that. Um, the calculator, however, will do it for you. Um, and again, I do have a video about multiplying and dividing by tens and hundreds, if you want to have a look at that. Now, 80 divided by 100, well, that comes out at 0 0.8. So you're going to do 0 0.8 and times it by 60, and you're going to get 48. So really, I haven't touched on the idea of it being a percentage. I have simply instead taken my preferred option of calling it a fraction, and working it out in exactly the same way as I would any other fraction question. We do, of course, have to consider the possibility that you may be asked a question such as the one we've just seen in an exam where you don't have a calculator. Therefore, we need to look at how we might manage that. Now, if you are able to carry out the method that we've just done by dividing and multiplying, that is absolutely fine. But we could do something slightly different, and that's by having a look at some of the more common percentages. In other words, we have 50%, we have 25%, we have 75%, we have 10%, and let's put in 5%. Okay, 
you may already be able to convert these into fractions yourself. 50%, for instance, equals one half. Therefore, 25%, which is half of 50, so a half of a half, is a quarter. If 25% is a quarter, 75% must be three quarters. Now, 10%, Maybe you know this one, maybe you don't, but 10% is one tenth, and 5% is one over 20. Now, why is this of use to us? Well, let's have a look at another percentage question. Let's say we are looking to find 65% of an amount and this time we will use 90. OK, we can, as I've just mentioned, go back. We can say, OK, we need to divide 90 by 100 and multiply by 65. But again, if you are not so confident in doing it, let's have a look at what else you could do. 65% can be broken down by using some of these percentages on the left hand side. So for instance, we know that 50% is a half. So if we work out a half of 90, divide it by two, we end up with 45. If we look at then what we need to add on to get 50 up to 65, let's add on a 10%. Now for that, it is a tenth. In other words, it's 90 divided by 10. So that's nine. Now, if we've now worked out that 10% equals nine, if you realize that 5% is half of 10%, then 5% must be half of nine, which would be 4.5. Now look what we've done. We've got 50% plus a 10%, that's 60, plus a 5%, that's 65. So all we have to do is add these numbers up. And if we do it properly, we end up with 58.5. Let's take another example. Let's say somebody's asking you to find 30%. Let's say 30% of 120. Again, you can go to the other method, 120 divided by 100 times by 30. But yet again, if you are not so confident, let's have a look at these common percentages again. We have 10%. Now, 10% is one tenth. In other words, it's just divided by 10. So 120 divided by 10 equals 12. So if 10% is 12, that means another 10% is also 12 and another 10% is also 12. 10, 20, 30%, add them together and the answer is 36. So let's uh, have a little summary here. Two methods, and you'll notice that in both methods of finding percentages, we end up using fractions. So, method one, and again, probably most useful in a calculator exam, but just as applicable if you know how to multiply and divide. If we are looking to find 40% of 160, we simply rewrite it as 40 over 100 of 160 and then we use the fraction method 160 divided by 100 take your answer and multiply by 40 so 160 let's do it divided by 100 is 1.6 times 40 equals 64 Method two, consider the common percentages and their fractions. So in this case, you need to look at which of these we might want to use. So 40% of 
160. Well, 10% seems to be the obvious one to go for here again. So 10% is 160 divided by 10. So that's 16. Therefore, we need four of those. So times by four and we will get 64. So you can add up all the different bits to find the percentage you need or you can do a straightforward finding a fraction method on this side. Let's take this a step further because a very common question is where you will be asked to find a percentage increase or decrease. Nothing to be scared of here is a typical kind of question. Last year, Jo had a gas bill of £80. She knows that this year the cost has increased by 5% what will her new bill be? Well, the task is simply to start by finding 5% of 80. So that's what your question is going to be. You are looking for 5% of 80. Now, I will do this using the fraction method. Uh, you can use either of the methods we've talked about on the last uh, page, but this one I'm going to rewrite as 5 over 100, 5 hundredths of 80. Therefore, I am going to use the two-step method, 80 divided by 100, and then multiply the answer by 5. That is something I would put in my calculator, quite simply, 80 divided by 100 times 5. And the answer I will get will be 4. So the increase is four. The question doesn't ask for the increase. It asks what will her new bill be? Well, it will be 80 plus the four pound increase, 84 pounds. And if you are asked for a percentage decrease, the task is exactly the same, except at the end, you would take away the percentage rather than add it on. And as far as this video is concerned, that's as far as I want to take percentages. There are further topics we can cover using percentages, but I think it's important we get the basics first. So I did mention that there were one or two other videos on my channel that are associated with this and uh, you can find them if you hit the subscribe button and there's a link to one of them here now. In the meantime, thank you very much.